On the west coast lies the idyllic Christian community of Gloryvale. Arguably the most well-known group in the country, members spend their lives serving God and practicing Christianity in everything they do. However, the group is not without controversy. Many people have escaped over the years, allegedly due to being oppressed, hurt, restricted or silenced by the leaders. So we decided to track down two ex Glory of our members to speak about their experience within the closed off Christian community. We wanted to know how a community with such good intentions could end up with such a terrible reputation. Lily Tarawa is one of the most well-known Gloryvale escapees in the country. Speaking for TV, TED Talks, and even writing a book about her experience, the country has been left captivated by her story. Lilia says her experience in the community as a child was a relatively happy one. In the community, there was a deep sense of belonging um, about where you fit and who you were. Um, you know, I was a Christian girl growing up in a Christian community, and I had my life mapped out for me that I would get baptised and then I would make my commitment and then I would have a husband chosen for me. I wanted to stay there for the rest of my life. There was no reason for me to even think about going anywhere else. Everyone I loved and the life that I enjoyed was there inside Gloria Vale. It wasn't until she saw a child being beaten by his father in front of her class that she seriously considered leaving the close-knit community. And cruelty to me is a real issue, like cruelty of animals, children. Um, and so it was these things that I saw, children not being treated the right way, under the guise of this is the way God wants us to discipline our children. And I thought, well, you know, God would actually um, want us to love each other and treat each other well and good and right. Lilia left with her family in her late teens and spent the next few years adjusting to life outside the community, which included joining a church group in Christchurch. I had lost and given up all of my friends, which was really hard, because I'd made this decision I was going to leave Gloria Vale with my family. So I wanted to make friends, so I started to integrate into the social groups there, attend the youth groups, and I was still very much um, a, a Christian woman. Um, I believed in my faith and um, I wanted to retain that for myself because we were taught growing um, up in Gloria Vale that if you leave Gloria Vale, you're not a Christian anymore. However, despite having left Gloryvale, she struggled a lot with people making comments about her birthplace and childhood home, which included people referring to it as a funny farm. I struggled a bit with the fact that like people would make comments about Gloryvale, and I would, I would think, well, what makes you qualified to have an opinion? And then there was also the media and everything that was like, Gloria Vale is often made out to be this really terrible place. And in a way, the New Zealand society has used Gloria Vale as a scapegoat. Like it's really easy to point the finger at a church that's doing it so wrong because then we don't have to look at our own issues and confront them. Lilia has since become the face of Gloria Vale escapees. She says she's happy to have a voice, but her and her family still struggle with the scrutiny and attention from it. By nature of being in Gloria Vale, the fact that you were born there and that you leave means that you are under scrutiny, so to speak. And the, you know, for example, if I date a new person, I always have to have the conversation where I tell them where I'm from. Like, and it's a tough conversation. Whereas if I just say grew up in, say, your normal Western New Zealand society, I would just be like, yeah, I'm from Christchurch, and I went to this church down the road. But it's like this big conversation I have to have with someone. I actually grew up in a religious cult. You worry if people will accept you, because there is a lot of judgment against that cult. So I wanted to basically become a bit of a bridge between worlds. Let people into my world, because we're all stuck in our own little bubbles. Like, let people into my world, into my life, what it was like in Gloria Vale, um, the difficulties that I had as a teenager, um, and hopefully inspire some people too, and help support them on their journeys, because how many people are deciding to leave churches? Lilia made the decision to leave Christianity after much research. 
She wants people to know that it was her choice and it was an educated one, and it wasn't because of Gloria Vale itself. I have lived in Gloria Vale as a Gloria Vale woman, and now here I am today saying, well, things aren't black and white. There's a lot of grey area, there are a lot of things we don't know, there are a lot of things science is still proving, and so for me, I'm not going to have blind faith in a religion, and I was taught that a lot in Gloria Vale. Trust in God, have faith, and if you're doubting your religion or questioning it, then you're not having faith. Whereas now, if you're doubting your religion or if you're questioning it, you're an intelligent, curious human being who's trying to figure things out for yourself, and I encourage that. For Lilia, she has had to rebuild many aspects of her life since leaving, including redefining what community means to her today. Connection. Community to me means connection. It means joy, love, um, life. It means a big pot of boil up with all your whanau around. It means sitting down and playing guitar um, and singing together. It means that when your cousin passes away, there are going to be so many people there for you. It means that if you don't have a roof over your head, someone's got a bed for you. It means that if you're broke and you can't put food in your mouth, there's going to be a plate for you on someone else's table. That is what community means to me, and it has nothing to do with Christianity. Hannah Harrison has a similar story to Lilia. She also grew up in Gloryvale and enjoyed a fairly idyllic childhood. However, as she grew up, her life as a young woman became controlled by fear. It's always the woman's job to do the dishes, the cleaning, the cooking, the washing, all of that. That's, men don't do that. That's women's work. I don't even think you realise how much you are controlled by fear and how much your thinking is affected by the fear. Apart from the public shaming, a lot of things, there were no immediate consequences, but it was more the idea of that is what your salvation and your soul depended on, your obedience to the leaders. That, you know, God's, God's put them there in that place of authority to guide you, and, and if you obey them, you're, it's like obeying God, and, and the phrase that gets used so often is like the blessing comes in obedience. So it doesn't matter if you're actually doing right or wrong, as long as you're being obedient to the leaders, you'll get the blessing of God. Hannah began to have doubts about her life in Gloria Vale as an older teen and would spend hours praying to God to make her love her life again in the community. The cost was too great. I didn't want to leave my family. Or, or like at that stage, I still thought community was a really good thing. And, and actually just saying, God, I, I don't want to leave this. Just take it away, just make it like a dream, like I can't even see it anymore or whatever. To then the point of going, well, obviously if, if I'm seeing this, God's al allowing me to see that there's things wrong. And I shouldn't be asking for God to like close my eyes again to it. Hannah's parents were also thinking of leaving. They had to make a quick decision out of fear of what the leaders may do if they found out. So what they'll try and do is they'll kick the husband out and convince the wife to stay. And my cousins, that happened to them, so um, it's like it's six or seven years on now from that, and the dad's out and the mum's in. And my cousin had said to my brother, don't let that happen to your family. So like for me and my brother and sister, it was really important to us that no one found out that we potentially wanted to leave. Hannah and her family left within three days of making a decision and escaped to a house in Timaru where they stayed while the family who lived in the house camped on the lawn. She says those first few months were filled with mixed emotions. Because you're still so, it's all so new and exciting, but at the same time, you, it's kind of dawning on you that there's potentially, like my grandparents, I may not ever see them again, and friends that I might not ever see, but I think it does actually take a, a few months before the initial excitement wears off and it's just like I actually just really miss my family or my friends. Lots of people that I met in those first few weeks that it took me a good year before I could actually talk to them properly because I was just really shy. Hannah remained a strong Christian in the four years since she left. 
She says Gloryvale taught her there was no meaning behind Jesus dying on the cross, but now she has found it. Like it was still really important to me when I left to be part of a church, and that um, like I was not letting go of God because I was leaving. And I think that has what's helped me to become the person I am today, is having that church family around me and actually being able to rely on God for strength because I know that in my own strength I couldn't have done it. And also that my salvation doesn't depend on me obeying him. That my salvation, you know, when Christ died on the cross, the work was finished. After hearing from Lilia and Hannah, we wanted to know what expert on religion Peter Lynham thought about Gloria Vale. Gloria Vale is a very, very happy experience for those who live within it. But of course, any person who starts to think for themselves, any person who's in any way attracted to the other things that are on offer, apart from what's on offer within within the group, is going to feel claustrophobic. But I mean, I've had a lot of contacts with people who've left, and uh, for sure the common factor in what where people have chosen to leave is that they've just wanted to do things which aren't bad in themselves, but that they're not allowed because they're not part of the community's choice of experiences. Peter says Gloriavale can be a good place to grow up, but it is a very controlled environment where it is difficult to make your own choices. But for Lilia and Hannah, their minds are made up on where they stand with faith, love and community. Lilia has gone on to become a public speaker, talking on female empowerment, leadership and hope after religion. And as for Hannah, she is happy finding her path within her church community in Timaru and working at a local shop. Because for them, community is what they made it. Change doesn't happen overnight. Um, it takes a lot of reflection, time to think, conversations. So just let that naturally, organically unfold for you and be okay with yourself during the process and try not to listen too much to the people who are telling you that it's not okay. I'm loved by the people around me, no matter what I do and no matter where I, I live. And I think that's quite a big thing to realise.